FedEx form. They come out over 13,000 on hand to witness this one in this big American Athletic Conference matchup today. Everybody in this building senses that Memphis can be an NCAA tournament team. Their season starts right now. Our officials, Byron Jarrett, Keith Kimball, and Jeb Hartness, said we're underway from Memphis. Here's Javon Quinterly for the Tigers, trying to work it inside to Tomlin. Gathers, puts it up, and in. Naquan Tomlin has been so effective for the Memphis Tigers. I think he's the difference maker as to why this team is playing at their highest level of the season. Starting five for UAB today. What about their number four, Eric Gaines? Yeah, Eric Gaines has struggled of late. He has to make shots. Number four and Gray right there with the basketball. He's got to come up big for Andy Kennedy. Otherwise, this team is going to struggle in this game. Jamie and Davis got it knocked away. It's David Jones through traffic to the hole. David Jones invites the bump. That's why he's like Harden. He plays through the bump, so physical. you got to stay in this and weather this somewhat early storm, Mark, right? I mean, this place is a tough place to play in. You get down early, you're at harm's way. Well, Memphis has now won three in a row, and this is a team that's played their best basketball of the season, and they blew out East Carolina in Greenville. Alejandro Vasquez missed it. It goes right out, though, to Eric Gaines. There he is on the three. Big shot. You just talked about it. Huge shot right there for UAB. Eric Gaines has to make shots for UAB to win on the road today. Memphis starting five. Tomlin had just had a basket for Memphis. How big is he in this game today? Well, Tomlin's a guy that's got size, range. He can knock down the three ball, and he's so uber athletic inside. Jones missing on the runner. Gaines has the rebound, and he's on the run. I like what Eric Gaines is doing early. Really an attack mode. Oh, three-pointer on the outside from Johnson. That's Ephraim Butter Johnson for UAB. Yeah, Butter Johnson, another shot maker for this team. You'll constantly see UAB change defenses. Now they go to 2-3 zone. So two big shots for UAB early. They lead it 6-4, to four, and now it's Nicholas Jordan lost the handle, and the Blazers have it with baskets. What were you saying earlier about teams in the half court here and what they want to try to do getting baskets in transition today? Well, certainly for, for UAP, it's a team that plays better in the half court situation where they get Lenda Borg involved like that, where you can muscle through defenders. For Memphis, it's about unscripted baskets, offensive rebounds, fast break points, points off of turnovers. That's how Memphis, that's when they're at their best. Because you feel they're not as good in the half-court set. I think David Jones is really good in the half-court, and I don't think they're as good together in the half -court. Gotcha. Jones misses on the three, and UAB with an early 8-4 to four lead coming up on three minutes gone by here in the first half. Gaines thought about it again. He hit his first one. Now he takes it in. He's blocked and fouled by Jones. How about Andy Kennedy in his fourth season for UAB? 96 wins, the most the program has ever, ever had in a four-year period, and has his team challenging for what could be their second NCAA appearance in the last three years. Now, I asked Andy Kennedy, how has he changed as a head coach over the years? I knew him back when he took over as an interim head coach at the University of Cincinnati. He said, I was, once was a coach that said, because I said so, that's why you do it, because I said so. Now, he explains the why, and that's why he's been effective as UAB is on a tear, winning 22 games, 27 games, and a program record 29 games over the last three seasons. That's 96 wins. It's impressive. It's been a couple years with us on ESPN, yep. right in the gap there between Ole Miss and now UAB. And I love when the coaches can get it from both perspectives, yeah. right? And he's one of those guys. 10 nothing run here for UAB after Memphis got the first two baskets of the game. Quinterly for three, and he comes back to stop that run. Yeah, defensive miscue right there by UAB as they gave Quinterly all the space to shoot it. Defender stayed back, Quinterly read it well. Well, the five honored on senior day here today. We'll show you that a little bit later on. No, there's a foul here going against UAB. Penny Hardaway. He's had Memphis in the last two straight NCAA tournaments. 
this team is playing better defense than they have all season long. Three-point defense, they've held their opponents to 22.4% over the last three games. Penny Hardaway's teams get better in March, and this team is peaking at the right time. Javian Davis was the one that was called for the foul for UAB. Here's Jaden Hardaway now, trying to work it inside. It's out of bounds off of the Tigers and Jordan Brown. Well, Mike, I was at the Memphis practice yesterday. It was energized. It was enthusiastic. It was everything you wanted from your team to prepare. They know, they are anticipating what's ahead of them. But they've got to get through UAB at home today. Three ball again. Johnson knocking them down here early. 13-7. to seven. Three for three from three-point range are the Blazers. Jones got blocked inside, and on the run, here comes Gaines. And that's going to be a travel. Yep. Kind of got held up there and hopped on the foot. And it takes us to our first timeout of the afternoon. UAB 13, Memphis 7. We'll be back right after this. Dip into Typhoon Cove. The metro area's most outrageous indoor hey, water. Carl. State. It looks like this roller coaster right now is rolling in the right direction here in March. It's funny, right? When you hear the fans and you hear people talk, I mean, there has been, again, as evident of what we just showed you, so many ups and downs, right? One one moment you're thinking this team, yeah, they're going to be great going to the NCAA tournament. Then the next time you know, you're like, oh, what's happening here? Yeah, Naquan Tomlin has been the guy that's been the stopgap measure of that that losing streak that went along for about a, a week and a half period. There's Tomlin right there. That's why he's so effective. He makes them different. He's like DeAndre Williams on the offensive glass. He's an energy giver, and he's harder to guard in their half-court sets. Naquan Tomlin is the reason Memphis to turn it around psychologically and physically. Well, he dominated last game. 20 points in route to that blowout win. And now Jones takes it in and scores. Manufactured points. That's the key to Memphis. When they get up and down, they are really, really dangerous. Lendeborg is being double teamed. Goes and gets underneath the hoop and finds Christian Coleman. Tremendous view and vision by Axel Lendeborg. Saw over the smaller defenders and delivered it inside. Coleman's in for the first time. The junior now underneath his heart away. Up and under doesn't go. Rebound Lendeborg. Hardaway, Hardaway made a simple shot look really hard. Johnson, that's a three. And it's an offensive rebound by Vasquez. Lend the board for three. What a long point oh, he's got it. Watch Naquan Tomlin run the floor. He outruns big guys all the time. There he is again. A little out of control in that shot, though, but an offensive rebound. David Jones, his putback wow. is good. We're, it's a two point game. Bully ball by David Jones. Coleman works to the hole, gets in there for the two. How about Coleman coming in off the bench here early for UAB? Well, UAB attacking the rim so well. Literally right back the other way. No, the tip is not there. It's knocked out of bounds. It's going to be UAB ball out of bounds off of Brown. Well, the Memphis defense has certainly been aggressive, and David Jones, he just wants contact. He's constantly looking for guys as to how he can get to the line. And Jones is so physical defensively as well, but you got to credit UAB. They're finding open players deep against the full court pressure. Look, it's one thing to break a press, another thing to score against the press. And that's Andy Kennedy's game plan. You said it about Jones, though. He's got to the line 188 times this season. James Harden won. Yep. There is not a more physical guard in college basketball than David Jones. Three ball, it's up, it's no good this time by Tony Tony and a rebound by Jones. Doesn't have defensive end as well, mind you. Here he comes, coast to coast. David Jones rejected inside and an offensive rebound and a foul. That is Joe Cooper that is going to go to the free throw line here for Memphis. Yeah, Joe Cooper is a walk on number 20. He's a little bit like Alex Lomax. He's a calming influence on this Memphis team. Not a guy that's going to score a lot, but a guy that can distribute and keep guys in the offense and keep their psyche in control. Good little leader, the left-hander, Joe Cooper. 
Final ESPN Big Monday doubleheader of the season. Two crucial rivalry matchups. Again, number 10 Duke at NC State. That starts us off at 7 o'clock. And then Texas and Baylor at 9 o'clock Eastern tomorrow. Big Monday on ESPN. We were watching a Big 12 matchup yesterday, right? Last night with Houston. How about that team? Yeah, Jamal Shad, player of the year. One of my All-Americans. First team All-American in my view, along with Zach Eady and company. But Jamal Shad, just the toughest little dude in the country. Conference is so tough, there's no doubt. Looking forward to those games tomorrow night with Big Monday on ESPN. Got a foul here. It's going to be on Memphis. It's on Jordan. It'll be his first. Now, Quinley and Cooper in the game together. Why? To attack that full court pressure. Mark, Joe Cooper, it's only his fourth game of the season. Hardly plays at all. Here's games for three, missing for UAB. And that's going to be a foul, yeah, on the rebound. It's on Coleman coming over the back, and he picks up his first. You, you brought up Joe Cooper. It's a, an astute understanding, Mike, of, of what you just observed there. This is fourth game. Why is he in the game now? Well, it's because he is that steady influence. He's a guy that'll hit singles. He's not trying to hit grand slam home runs. He keeps the game more simple for Memphis. Here's a turnover. Into the front court is Gaines. Steps back, puts up a three. It's no good. Players going down all over the place. Rebound by Walton. Here's Quinterly. Memphis running again. Kicks it to the corner. Tomlin. Good pass. It's over to Cooper. Back to the corner. Tomlin for three. Naquan Tomlin drove and passed to Cooper and then replaced himself on the backside. And Cooper gave it back. That's why Cooper's in the game. It's Memphis by a point now. 18-17. Coming up on 12 minutes to play in the first half. Three pointers all over the place. Gaines does it again. That's his second of the day. He's two for four from three-point range. Back the other way quickly. Walton, no. And there's a foul. It's going to be on UAB. And it's on Tony. The unselfishness of this Memphis team in their half-court sets. Naquan Tomlin, first of all, he gives it up to Joe Cooper, and Cooper drives it as Naquan Tomlin steps right the same spot. Great teamwork. That's why Cooper's Students. Numbers. His last four games, and this is when this team started really figuring it out. Over 18 points a game, nearly six rebounds a game, and shot 72% from the floor. Reigning American Athletic Conference Player of the Week. Memphis trying to click here at the right time. The three wins in a row. Needing this big one today here at home. And then a date with FAU on the road on March 9th. A quad one opportunity. But this is the anticipation game. They've got to get through UAB. And that's not going to be easy. I don't like this team a lot. Good feet inside. And the shot clock is off. That went over the rim there by Jordan. So it's UAB possession. Yeah, and, you, and Florida Atlantic's a team that they beat. Not that long ago, back on February 25th, 78-74. That was game two of this three-game win streak. Yeah, they beat Wichita State and FAU by, by four. They drilled Wichita State, and they drilled East Carolina and Greenville on Thursday night. Gaines pulls up. No good. Rebound Cooper. Watch the spacing of the blue jersey. See how they clear out for Tomlin right there? They want to isolate him. Jordan back to Tomlin. Now works to the hole. Oh, back the other way. Scores it against Coleman. Now he and Jordan in the game give you two rangy athletes. They're so much quicker and they can spread the floor. They're harder to guard with number two in blue and Tomlin also in blue, number seven in the game at the same time. Tie game of 20. Coleman out. Trying to go the other way on Tomlin. And he dies. How about that? <laughs> well, Christian Coleman just lowered his shoulder, took it through the bump. That was probably a foul on Tomlin. I'm sure he had something different to say about it than how about that? You know, as he looked back at Tomlin on his way back to the defensive end. Yeah, Mike, it's really interesting. Speaking of the defensive end for Birmingham, they are changing up their defenses every single possession. They're hard to prepare for that way. No doubt. Here's a three. Tomlin, no, and it's back rim. Rebound. Daniel Ortiz. 
Andy Kennedy and UAB, they're keeping Memphis on their heels. They're making them think every single possession in the half-court sets. Gaines trying to get by Cooper. Double clutch pass in midair. Now it's back out to Ortiz. Bumped by Quinoy, shoots it up over him. No, and in midair, it's Davis that corrals it to put it in. Yeah, Davis just stepped to the open area as the blue jerseys came toward the ball. He recognized it, went right to the rim. Blazers by four. 9.45 to play in the first half. Jordan clangs that one. Rebound pulled in by UAB and Davis. Well, UAB playing with ch such a chip on their shoulder today. They haven't played well of late, but this is a team that's playing really well today. Coleman. Oh, it's a hit when he hit the floor super hard. And Coleman's going to get some help up. It was on Cooper, the foul. Well, Tomlin, he does such a good job playing with Nick Jordan. And that time they played a little two-man game on one side. And then and then Davis just a really good job of moving to the open space and making himself available. It's the simple things that win basketball games. Johnson gets it in. Vasquez. Back for Tony, and he is fouled. Two free throws coming as UAB leads it by four. 9.25 to go first half as Jordan picks up his second for the Memphis Tigers. Yeah, Tony, Tony was the first signee for Andy Kennedy. He laid the groundwork around Tony, Tony during that pandemic time. And this is an energy giver, got to plays really hard, physical. We see his physical nature just going to the rim. They call the foul on Hardaway instead. Final SEC Big 12 Super Tuesday doubleheader comes your way on ESPN. It's starting off in Gainesville, Alabama, Florida at 7, and Kansas State and Kansas at 9. That comes your way on Tuesday on ESPN. Super Tuesday presented by Progressive. Kansas coming off the loss at Baylor. What a job Scott Drew has done. But those Baylor Bears, they're always in the hunt. I coached against his dad, Homer, who's one of the greatest guys in the history of college basketball. He's the only guy that I lost to, I think, every time it made me feel good about it. That wasn't, that's what a great guy Homer Drew is. So you felt okay when he didn't get the win against him. He made me feel better <laughs> somehow. He was the only guy that could do that. Good, good. Again, switch defenses. Here's a three. It's up and good by Quinterly. Now UAB switched defenses and forgot to communicate. That's why Quinterly was open. And he's two for two from three-point range with six points. Memphis three of six on the outside as a team. UAB is four of nine. Ortiz trying to make it five. Wow. He does. Wow is right. Man, he had his legs underneath him the entire time. UAB five of ten now from three-point range. They deflect the pass. Memphis still has it. With Jalen Young is in the first in for the first time today. Jones. No. Rebound. Leatherboard. Ruthie wants to push it again. Lendeborg gets it stripped out of bounds. It stays with UAB. As they have a five-point lead, and we have 8.22 to go first half. How about the ability of him run the floor? Well, and Andy Kennedy came in with a game plan to mix and match defenses, and it's confusing Memphis right now. And in every defense, they're acting. Now, sometimes they don't communicate well, and that's hurt them. But overall, the mix and match of defense has been a brilliant stroke by Andy Kennedy. Yeah, you're right. He said we're going to run a few out of here today, and it has worked because all it does is it takes you out of your offense for one possession. You know, here's a foul. We've got free throws coming. Just enough to make the defense think, right? And or the offense think. Yeah. The other way, when you change up your defenses that often like that, it's really a good strategy. And, and remember, look, Memphis is better again with unscripted baskets when they manufacture points on the offensive pass. They get a turnover and go. They're so good in those circumstances. In the half court, they're not as good of, a, of an executed team. Although you have David Jones that can break down any defense, and so he bails them out at times. So mixing and matching, changing defenses. As Memphis right now, a little bit confused on the offensive end. I know it was a frustrating game for UAB in their last game versus Wichita State. That was at home, and they lost 74-66. to But Jaxel Lendeborg had 20 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists, and a block, and just under 30 minutes of action. 
in his last two games, he's averaged 23 points a game and 13 and a half rebounds and shot 75%. Yaxel Lendeborn. That's crazy. Now a full court pressure defense from Andy Kennedy falling back into the 2-3 zone. We've seen five different looks defensively right. from UAD here in the first 12 minutes of this game. And now here in this half court set, really in a settled situation for one of the first times today. Can Memphis convert? They do. Walton got a tough step back. Long range shot. A great shot by Penny Hardaway getting Walton in the game and in the dead zone against that. That zone defense right there around the free throw line and down to the 12-foot mark. Well executed by Jaquan Walt. Blazers by five, Ortiz. Vasquez and over to Gates. Now back inside. What a shot up and good by Davis. Javian Davis, that was strong. Now Javian Davis is one strong hombre inside. He's bringing it right through their chin. Here's Walton, kicks it, corner for Ashton Hardaway. Hardaway fade away, that's tough. Jones is there, couldn't get it to go. And every time Memphis dribbles, it ends up to be a problem for them offensively. Technical oh. foul. Jones is called for a technical. Yep, Jeb Hartness, as he was coming up the court, immediately blew the whistle and teed him up. And that's going to be David Jones' second personal foul. We're talking to Coach Hardaway about it now, and that's the sixth Memphis team foul. That's not what you need for your leader. With two points. Uh, at times denied him the basketball. He's been effective defense right now that Penny Hardaway and his crew has to come up with an answer for. And so the technical free throws here with Ortiz. Jones stays in the game mark with the two personal fouls. So I know what I'm doing if I'm Andy Kennedy. I'm isolating Jones and going right through his chops. I'm going to try to get a third foul on David Jones right now. It's a nine-point UAB lead. That is the largest of the day. They've hit four of their last five. And they have possession as well. Vasquez puts it in for games. So Penny Hardaway goes zone now to protect David Jones. Davis feeds the cutter and the basket is scored by Vasquez. Jones couldn't double team right there. He couldn't come to the ball hard. That's why the backside cut and pass was so wide open. It was like essentially five on four there in that sequence. Quinterly has it here from Memphis. To the corner, Tomlin. Long on the three, rebound, Lendeborn on the run. He's also got gains. Alley oh, oh, man. Eric Gaines. High flyer. What a sequence to put UAB up 13. Tom won the offensive rebound. No, but a foul is called. Yaxel Lendeborg at 6'9", 230 pounds. Didn't start playing basketball until the last 11 games of his senior season. Just threw up a lob to Eric Gaines that's deposited. Gaines has got to love that, especially after the last game, Mark. He was 0 for 5 from the field. He didn't score. He had five assists, a couple steals, and the UAB loss. But something like that just energizes you, right? The team is up by double digits. What a sequence. Well, it started to open the game when Eric Gaines made his first shot. Over the last four, he's averaged three and a half points per game over the last four. He has shot a whopping 15% from the floor during that time. 11% from three. Numbers don't get any worse. This is a cool customer, Eric Gaines, today that Andy Kennedy was relying on. And this team's bombing up threes, and they're drilling them. It's Vasquez who hits it this time. That is the sixth three-pointer of this first half. They're 6 of 11 at 55%. And remember, Memphis has held their opponents over the last three games to 22% from three. UAB's torching this defense. UAB's only shooting 31% themselves in three-point range. A foul, a block and a foul. The Lendeborg got... He got the ball, and we're going to say probably a little bit of the arm as well. It's the first foul of Lendeborg today. Well, you just can't panic now if you're Memphis. And, of course, yeah. Naquan Tomlin just goes up strong, exactly what he should do. 
and Lendeborg was moving forward with his arm down. That's the reason for the call. Yeah, certainly a foul. Tomlin with two free throws. This league is just crazy. Part of me let night. There's a new story, new exciting yep. game. Part the of me bottom of this, of this conference has been winning regularly. Now. Actually, the second foul on Lendeborg, so he's got to go out. So he's on the bench now for UAB. With 5.40 remaining in this first half. He's got two. David Jones has two from Memphis, who is coming to the sideline now. So he goes out. Look, these are two top-tier teams that right now are playing for a double bye in the American Athletic Conference tournament. UAB is right there, half a game ahead of Memphis right now. Memphis needs this win to get those top four spots. Not only that, we talked about at the start of the broadcast with our Joe Lenardi in bracketology. There's this basket scored by Davis. He feels that if Memphis wins this game today, they move into that next four out category, inching their way closer and closer to being in consideration for the tournament. Long way to go, though. Still a lot of basketball yep. left here. And UAB changes defenses again now in the 2-3 zone without David Jones. And you got Joe Cooper in the far corner. Not a guy that typically makes a whole lot of threes. And it's going to be Blazers' ball. And Naquan Tomlin is employing his team reverse the ball. Send it to the op opposite side. With Jones out, if you're Memphis, you really got to get up and down the transition, right? I mean, you got to force turnovers yeah. and then get the offensive rebounds. Five straight field goals here scored by the Blazers' gains. Oh, what a shovel pass inside. The up and under counted for Coleman. But Eric Gaines is slicing and dicing this defense. Walton's pass intercepted. Ortiz. Memphis needs a timeout. 47 to 29. The lead is 18 for UAB. It is all UAB. Changing defenses has led to turnovers. UAB outsmarting Memphis right now. 22 to 6 run. Andy Kennedy and UAB coming in here on a post. 47 to 29 with an 18 point lead for the Blazers here on the road. The 13,000 plus in the FedEx Forum that have been quieted down. Yeah, the rhythm of Memphis has been disrupted. The rhythm has been established for UAB, all because of the switching of defenses and the indecision of the Memphis half court offense. I mean, Mark, we showed you the roller coaster, right? Yeah. For the Memphis Tigers. I mean, they, they were hoping that, all right, we're on the rise here because we've won three games in a row, beating two teams by 24 points. But. This is more reminiscent of, for them, unfortunately, that game they had at SMU. They lost 106 to 79. They gave up 58 points in the first half to SMU. Look at it here today. 47 already for the Blazers. We still have 428 to go. But this team has talent. Remember, USF was down here by 20 and came back and won. You flip that. Can Memphis do the same thing? Can they play at the championship level of the conference champions, the USF Bulls? Well, Congratulations to Amir Abdul Rahim, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. Another three. It's all to follow Coleman. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know a human being could jump that. We're in an NBA arena here, right? Home of the Grizzlies in Memphis. I mean, UAB looks like an NBA team right now. Like the way they are throwing these shots down, crashing the offensive glass. Look at this. Christian Coleman is 6'9". In high school, he was 6'1". He had no college basketball offers at all. He worked at Walmart. Holy cow. A Walmart bagger <laughs> just dunked it on everybody in the FedEx Four. This is shocking today, to say the least. I mean, not that, you know, UAB is a very, very good team. We know that. But the way they are playing right now in this first half. Well, the tournament in Fort Worth is just going to be crazy. Period. End of story. I've seen enough to figure that out. Eric Gaines has just been tremendous with the ball matched up with Quinn. 
They're getting the ball inside there too, Mark. How are they getting those easy touches? It's going to be Memphis ball, though. We'll talk more about it when we return. 3.58 to go first half. It's been all UAB so far here in the first half. Right, Mark? I mean, he's absolutely right. The defense has turned into bad offense. I mean, 100%. Yeah, UAB has turned this into a chess match, and Memphis wants to play checkers. And it's not going to be that way today. Here's Quinterly. And he's also read that somebody's got to take command and take charge the leadership out there. David Jones with the two fouls right now, and he's been struggling in this first half. He also got called for a technical. That's out of bounds off of Quinterly. It's UAB possession. And to the point about bad defense for Memphis, all of their two-point baskets from the field have come in the paint. 24 points in the paint. They're either layups or dunks, or they've hit three-pointers. Yeah, UAB 50% from behind the arc against a team that's held their opponents last three to 22%. Here's another three. Vasquez Man. does it again. This is an offensive and defensive clinic by UAB. He's two for two from three-point range. The team is now seven of 13. It's a 19-point lead. Yeah, Alejandro Vasquez, the guy, look, we know he can knock down shots. And now UAB is playing with unbelievable confidence. UAB has hit nine of their last ten from the field. And Memphis has no field goals in the last four minutes and 25 seconds. Vasquez went for 22 points and lost to the Wichita State Shockers. The previous game is averaging like four points a game over the previous four. You foul was, that today. The foul was on Gaines coming up at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific over on ESPN. We'll take you out to Phoenix. The Suns hosting the Thunder for second place in the West. Like everything else, you can also watch it on the ESPN app. It's NBA Sunday tonight at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. Well, for Memphis, it's about chipping away and defending on this end. So many balls are going to paint, and so many balls in the paint have gone in the basket. Once again, Davis inside. Through a double team. Tomlin got hit in the face. It's going to be an offensive foul. Yeah, that's a good call there. <laughs> and Walton was right in the official's face there. Keith Dimble said, I, I got it. I, I, I called the offensive. I heard you. He's watching right here. Well, it was also double dribble before that. Yeah. That ball wasn't touched. So, actually, UAB got the worst part of the deal, which was a foul. Probably should have been a violation. Jones up to the top. Walton trying to go in for the dunk. And it's recovered by Tomlin. Well, now Memphis has, hasn't, they can't try to score 17 points in one possession. He's got to keep it simple now. Vasquez has called for the foul on Jones. Now, Walton certainly took it strong, one in contact, not able to finish. Tomlin just never gives up on the play and gives him an extra possession right there. We've seen the explosiveness of Memphis. 16-point lead. They are at home. We've seen how this place can go crazy with this team. And they're going to need everybody in this building to help out today. A lot of time. Mark, first time David Jones has gotten to the free throw line in this game. He lives there at the line so far this season. Well, UAB has done such a good job of playing zone defenses, taking away the dribble penetration routes, helping and filling gaps. Overall, the team, though, is 14 to 14 from the strike here as Gaines works it in. Finds Davis. Another dunk for UAB. Total lost vision by Memphis. Everybody was looking at the ball. Quinterly forcing his way in to draw the foul here. Watch all the eyes of the blue jerseys. Everybody is looking at the ball. Everybody. So what happens? Davis just slides behind the defenders and goes up and deposits it. No help because everybody is ball centric. 100% Mark, great observation. That was a great look there too. You saw four blue jerseys right, exactly right, staring right at it. And that's how UAB has got so many layups and dunks in this game. And we said it earlier about how important this is for Memphis. Joe Lenardi 
says with a win today for the Memphis Tigers, they could be in the next four out category. You see Florida Atlantic, a projected 10 seed. USF projected 12 seed. That's if they win the American Athletic Conference Championship. Yep. So they're the front runner right now and will be the number one seed. Well, Memphis, of course, earlier in the season with wins over Missouri, Michigan, Arkansas, at BCU, Texas A&M, Virginia, Clemson here at home, Vanderbilt, and FAU just recently, and they've been playing great basketball, but UAB looks like the championship team today. Again, that championship's been decided, by the way. The USF Bulls. Right. What a job. Amir Abdurrahim, head coach for USF. Kennesaw State last year, the job that he did there. This ball is not rejected out of bounds by Will Shaver of UAB. Chris Youngblood has been tremendous. Selton McCall has been so good. Casey Pryor, he brings that, that ACDC energy to that team. A few kids out there, look up ACDC. <laughs> They'll like it. They all know it, Mark. <laughs> Here's a turnover and an easy one again for Gaines. Showtime for UAB today here in Memphis, Tennessee. Walton the other way. No. Fights for it. Got it back. He's rejected inside by Coleman. Vasquez. And UAB leads it by 20. This half is just an old-fashioned butt whipping. Walton. Missing on the three. Tom will tips it. Quinter, he's got it. Keeps it inside Walton. He's fouled. And it's going to be on Eric Gaines, who's going to pick up his second for UAB. UAB's got a few guys with two personal fouls now. You got Davis, you got Len the Borg, and you got Gaines. Boy, and Eric Gaines, he started this game with a three. And this guy is a cool customer for Andy Kennedy and the UAB Blazers. And today... He's playing like a cool customer. Everything's coming easy right now to Eric Gaines. He makes Snoop Dogg look like he's uptight. <laughs> That's what Andy he's Kennedy said. Yeah. I'll say Coleman got called for the foul here. 13 for UAB, so he's going to go out. That's going to be the third on Coleman. So Coleman's got three. Gaines has two. Davis has two. Lendeborg has two. 13 team fouls in this first half for UAB. So if there's something they really do have to watch, though, Mark, in the second half is the foul trouble. Well, the key now is with 147, get to the locker room still with a substantial lead and all those guys staying at two fouls. UAB is shooting 71% from the field. 22 at 31. Memphis at 32%, 10 of 31. 30 points in the paint for UAB in this first half. Yeah, so Andy Kennedy's going to burn some shot clock here because he's trying to protect all those guys in foul trouble. Three ball, Vasquez. Oh. Nobody guarded him. Nobody guarded him. And Vasquez says, if you're not going to guard me, I'm going to make it hurt. They are. 8 of 14 from three-point range now for the UAB Blazers at 57%. No field goals in almost seven minutes, and finally Quinterly gets it for the Tigers. But maybe that's the leadership this team can build on now, down 20 in the first half. Kennedy will burn shot clock again. They'll keep it wide. Gaines, shot clock's inside 10. Gaines takes it in. Oh, he's got about another dunk. He's got it back. Another try. This one by Tony. That doesn't go. Memphis has it with 27 seconds to play. Well, now you just need one good shot. Got to get this thing down to 18 or 17. Quinterly. He does. With 14 seconds to work with here for UAB. The lead is 18. For Chiefs. Lost the handle. A little bit out of control. That's out of bounds off of him. And Memphis has 4.4 seconds to go before halftime. To see if they can get something else up here 
and cut into this 18-point deficit. Yeah, David Jones put in the game right now at 4.4. He's your go-to guy for last-second shot plays. He and Quinterly both have come up clutch for Memphis. Vasquez has 13 points for UAB to lead the charge. 12 for Gaines, 10 for Coleman. For Memphis, Quinterly's got a game-high 17 points. Tomlin's got 13 after the fast start. But then UAB took command. And have not looked back. Quinterly, four seconds to go. Quinterly. Long three. Got it at the buzzer. Let's put this into perspective. Memphis, in two of their last three games, they held Charlotte to 52 for the game. East Carolina to 58 for the game. They just gave up 61 in the first half. They did close the half on a 7-0 run. Long three by Quinterly at the buzzer from in between the three-point line and half court. Davis misses on the first shot of the second half for UAB, and Memphis runs, and Jordan scores it. And a foul. What you didn't see at the half, when Javon Quinterly made the shot to cut this game to 15 as Jordan goes in for the deposit here, Penny Hardaway nodded and walked to the locker room like, we got this. He looked so confident walking to the locker room after this thing was cut to 15. We'll see. Vasquez comes up with the ball after the miss and the free throw and almost a steal here. Gaines in trouble, and he lost it. Quinterly gets a steal, gets it to Jones. Jones misses, and Walton had a hand on it. He's got it. Back to Jones. There it is. It's an 11-0 run here for the Tigers, dating back to the end of the first half. Here we go. Three ball, Vasquez. Not there. Rebound, Lendeborg had a hand on him and lost it. A great challenge was shot by Jaquan Walton. Superman flying through the air that time. Jordan for three. Follows his own shot. Dumps it to Walt, Tomlin, and he scores. Andy Kennedy, timeout. You can just see it over there on the sideline. He can't believe it. This team builds up so. Jordan Jones and Penny Hardaway sees it right now that his Tigers are reacting in a positive way. And I watch body language. I watch body language close. And this Memphis team is energized and they are together coming out to start the second half. This game is a roller coaster itself. You know, we talk about the whole season. Yep. Well, this game by itself here. Back the other way. Here's Johnson. Take it away. Look at this Memphis and Jones. He's got Jordan for the alley -oop. Saw that coming the whole way. Gaines gets it over for Lendeborg, and now here's Johnson. Vasquez, no, Jones has it. Memphis is aggressively challenging every single shot. Jones for three. The Tigers are on an 18-0 run. And a steal by Quinterly. Got it. Play the board for Johnson. Three ball, they need it. Not there. Offensive rebound, Davis. That's a travel. Instead, no call, and he got blocked, and it goes out of bounds, and it stays with UAB.
It's all started on the defensive end. We talked about soft defense against the shooters in the first half. A total transformation defensively for Memphis. They are in the grills and challenging every UAB shot. Vasquez. Got it. Finally. They were 0 for 6 to start the second half. Their lead is 4, and there's going to be a foul. It's on UAB. It's going to be on Gaines. And that's going to be his third. There's the challenge from Jaquan Walton. That's the challenge I'm talking about. Those are the shots where Memphis, when they're athletic, it leads to deposits on the opposite end. Invest in defense and then deposit the ball at the three-point line or at the rim. Now, you said it about what Penny Hardaway was looking like at the end of the first half. Like, oh, we got this down by 15 he points. He must have knew something because look at the way his team's come out here. Jones, he scores. An adjustment by Memphis. Now they're reading the defense, getting the ball in the teeth of the defense and attacking. Smart coaching by Penny Hardaway at halftime. Gains for Coleman. Jump stop. Maybe a travel there. Yes, they got it this time. Andy Kennedy is so upset he thought it was a foul. His team's lead of 22 is down to two. And did we just get a technical? Yes. Yep. They got a restraint, Coach Kennedy. Oh, they just tossed him out of the game. Oh, my. Andy Kennedy has been ejected from the game. For UAB. It's a two point game. Defense to get the ball in the teeth of the defense. And everything went against UAB. And now Andy Kennedy has been tossed from the game. David Jones at the free throw line for the technical free throws here as Andy Kennedy. Was teed up twice. Second one, you're tossed. So the four free throws for David Jones. Memphis now has the lead. This is unreal. Now, this is psychological warfare now. As UAB needs to come back and figure out a way to recenter themselves. All right, so here's what he's upset about, Mark. Yeah, there was a bump right there as Tomlin bumped in. To UAB's Christian Coleman and Andy Kennedy did not like the no call and then the walking violation. Memphis has regained the lead 65 to 63. Their first lead since it was 1870. Quinley is blocked inside, and here come the Blazers on the run. Vasquez. Takes it in, he is fouled. They're going to head to the line, a chance to tie the game. Tomlin can't believe it. But the foul does not go against him. Or is it? Yes, it is on Tomlin. They do call it on him for his second. Well, anytime the clock can stop, that's a good thing yep. right now. Yes. And associate coach Ryan Cross. Cross is taking over. Will take over. All right, so Vasquez can tie the game here at 65. We played just under four minutes to go in the second frame. Memphis is on a 26 to 2 run. Yeah, Cross coached with Steve Forbes. He's been a successful junior college coach. Played his college basketball at Buffalo. Actually, when I was coaching against him, as a matter of fact. You guys had a conversation about that before the game here today. He's one for two in the free throw line, though, and Memphis still has the one-point lead. Vasquez. Walton looking for Tom when he gathers and scores. Well, the ball's moving crisply now. I guess it doesn't matter what defense UAB is running. Memphis is moving the ball aggressively. Vasquez and attempts the three and is fouled by Walton. 
And he's going to shoot three free throws and a chance to tie the game when we return. Finally, a timeout here in the second half. 15-42 remaining. Tigers have come all the way back. 67-64. Memphis was dead and buried. Hello, Lazarus. He has risen here in Memphis. Mark, that 28-3 run started with a minute 25 to go in the first half. They closed out the first half on a 7-0 run, right, with a point yep. only three at the buzzer. Yep. So basically, they've been on a 28-3 run here in 5 minutes and 43 seconds. Yeah, this game has completely changed, but that's the explosive nature of this Memphis team. We saw the largest comeback this season. That was when they trailed Wichita. Yeah, instead of 14 point deficit, 7.55 to go in that game back on February 3rd here at home when they won 65 to 63. Well, now Andy Kennedy has been ejected from the game. Ryan Cross takes over the bench at UAB, and now it's really a matter of settling this UAB team down and now taking it one possession at a time. They're down two, but it feels like they're down 20 after that run. Agreed. Vasquez was fouled shooting the three, and he makes two of the three free throws. So it's a one-point game still in favor of the Tigers. Watch David Jones in the middle of the zone, number eight in blue, right at the free throw line. He's their trigger guy. They want to give him the ball. There he is. Yep, you got it. Puts it up. Couldn't get the bounce. Linda Borg the rebound. Oh, nice job wow. dribbling there from Linda Borg. Wow, and he goes right to the oh. hole, and he puts it up. No. Follows his own shot, got it ripped away. They're going to call a jump. It was Quinnley that got in there. It's going to be Memphis possession. Well, Lendeberg, Lendeberg did everything but finish right there. What an athletic play by Axel Lendeberg. He's just weaving his way through the blue jerseys and gets the ball to the rim for a bunny. And Quinnley just doesn't, doesn't give up on the play. Just four points for him so far today on one for four from the field, but he does have seven rebounds and four assists. This they game want, is huge. They want Jones to get a touch every single time. Number eight and blue in the dead spot. There he is. Jones for three. Not there. Offensive rebound. Walton gets it to Tomlin. And he got it stripped. And it's knocked out of bounds to UAB. Tomlin yeah. touched it last. Really interesting to see what Memphis is doing right now. When shots go up, watch Jordan number two in blue. Watch Naquan Tomlin number seven in blue. They're crashing the backside of the offensive glass along with Walton number ten in blue. They're doubling down to manufacture points against the zone defenses of UAB. Let the board throws it down. Now UAB. for UAB, it's just to settle down and turn it into a dog fight. Quinterly behind the back inside. It's Jordan and Memphis regains the advantage. Penetrating passes consistently now from Memphis. They're not settling for jump shots. They're getting the ball in the paint. Out of bounds to the Tigers. How big is this game? Both of these two teams fighting for a top four spot in the conference, which you get a double bye in the upcoming American Athletic Conference Tournament in Fort Worth at Dickey's Arena coming up in the second week in March. Well, in Memphis coming off of three consecutive victories, this is the game they need at home to set up the big matchup against FAU. This team can make the NCAA tournament. They've got to keep winning. Foul underneath. Memphis was number 10 in the country at one point with wins over Missouri, Michigan, Arkansas, at VCU, Texas A&M, Virginia, Clemson, Vanderbilt, and they knocked off FAU. Vasquez has called for the foul for UAB, his second, and he needs some help to get to the bench. He got shaken up. Trying to walk it off here. They're hobbling on that right foot, as you see. So Vasquez goes down here in front of the bench. Boy, he's had an unbelievable day, too. He's got 18 points. There it is again, Mark. He's underneath battling with Tomlin. Yeah. And he's the one who's called the foul. He's thrown to the floor. Now the ball is loose. And Jones has it. Up fake. Puts it up. No, he got fouled. So Jones has two free throws coming. The foul goes against Coleman. Penny Hardaway has pushed every right button at halftime. His confidence at halftime lifted this team and settled this team. 
against the zone defense. They're getting the ball in the teeth of the defense. And then they're doubling down on the offensive glass. One more for Jones. Big Monday. Tomorrow, final one of the season. The rivalry matchups, Duke and NC State, Texas and Baylor starts at 7. Second game at 9, tomorrow night, Monday, on ESPN. We'll have to check and see on Vasquez. Again, team high, 18 points. Full court pressure, we'll see a trap. Nope, Jordan goes off the ball. Playing straight up man. Three-point lead. Tigers, Gaines, thinking about the three for the tie. It's out. No good front rim, tipped around. Quinterly on the run for Memphis. Has Tomlin underneath. Walton in the corner. Three ball, Walton. Offensive board, Tomlin. Memphis dominating the offensive glass, and the energy comes from the building. Tomlin's got 19. Memphis led this game 4-0 to start. That was their largest lead at four. It's now five. Landeborg, back step for three. That's no good. Walton has it. Seven minutes gone by second half. Quarter lead for three. No good. It'll be a put shot, but it's right back out to him. Multiple shot after multiple shot after multiple shot. The energy level for Memphis is off the charts here in the second half. Cornerly, look at the shot clock. Five to shoot. Crosses over, gets by Tony, goes up. Too strong. Tapped out. That might be out of bounds off a of UAB. It is. The well, UAB just cannot secure a defensive rebound. It's that simple. What's happening to UAB defensively here? That's allowed Memphis to get back to this thing, right? Well, Penny Hardaway came in with a second-half game plan to get David Jones in the middle of the zone, and they've also doubled down on the offensive pass. Any shot that goes up, you see Jordan, you see Tommy, you see Walton, just go after it. There they go again. There's Walton. You called it. And before that, whistle blows. Foul on UAB. This is going to be a one-and-one one already, because that's the 17 foul committed by the Blazers. With 12.23 remaining in the contest. So they'll make them earn it at the free throw line here. Vasquez. Hoping to get back into action with that left foot and ankle. And they missed the front half of the one and one. That's big. Set of the basket there by Walton. And it comes over the free throw line. And Jones misses the front half of the one and one. And here's where Eric Gaines and Yaxel Lendeborg have to step up. They've got to be the leaders of this offense. Number three and gray, number four and gray. Three down on the right block there, Mark. Let's see if he's calling for it. Instead, it's a corner three from Johnson. That's no good. And Memphis is Walton the rebound. Quinnelly finds a squeaky toggle. Lenderborg looks exasperated out there. It's a foul underneath the basket, and it takes us to a timeout. It's going to be on Tomlin. Naquan Tomlin. He doesn't... Trailing by 22 with a minute 25 to play in the first half. They now lead it by seven. And while the seeding in the American Athletic Conference tournament in Fort Wayne is important, this team is vying for an NCAA at-large berth. It is desperation time. It is March. It is time for Memphis to earn it or let it go. One or the other. UAB in their path today. Here's Gaines. I like it. I like it. Lindeborg, no offensive foul. I like it. The coach cross came out with a touch for Yaxel Lindeborg. He and Gaines have to be the guys that deliver victory in this game. But again, tough, hard-nosed defense and Nick Jordan in the right place at the right time. Third foul on Lindeborg for UAB. Now Memphis recognizes zone. They send Jones right into the middle of it. He draws a defender. He's open now. They got to give it to him. Corner lane. 
Walton. There he is. Jones at the top. Thought about the three. Now he's going to put it up. And in. Marker all over it. Ten point lead now for the Tigers. Smart basketball. Give the ball to your best player in the best position against that zone. Well executed by Memphis. The UAB has gone cold here. Two of 12 in the second half. 17%. Johnson. There it is. He did that bucket in a big way. How things have turned here in the second half. You get Vasquez on the bench. You get injured. You got guys in foul trouble. Andy Kennedy, the coach, has been teed up and tossed from this game. Got two tees in a row. Eight-point lead, though, here for the Tigers. Jordan. The runner, no. Jones is there. Mark, you talked about the offensive rebound. A complete turnaround in this second half for the Tigers. Crashing the glass here. Yeah, Jordan has space there to move and play because of Jones' movement into the open spaces against his zone. Jones is acquiring two and three defenders every time he moves, which leaves everybody else open. And when they shoot it, he just goes and gets it. Offensive rebounding from the first half. It was 11 to 5 Memphis. It's now 19 to 8 in favor of the Tigers. And the second chance points. Memphis has 20. Now David Jones is a first team All-American. Period. All right, what do you got to do here for UAB? I mean, there's still half of the second half to go. You're down 10. It's not insurmountable. I want Yaxel Lundeborg to get something in the paint. There's number three right there. They're looking high-low inside. And there's a hold right there. I want Lendeborg and Gaines to get a touch every single possession. And Vasquez, of course, out with an injury. Big, strong, physical bowling ball guard that goes downhill. That hurts UAB. That's a third foul on Tomlin. There's no sympathy in college basketball in March. You smell blood, you circle, and you devour what's ever in the way. Well, Jones is trying to get it to Lendeborg and he threw it out of bounds. Ryan Cross taking over coaching here now with this UAB team. And now we're going to see some 1 3 1. Jones is wide open on the backside. They miss him. See that stat? 15 points off turnovers from Memphis in the second half. Back inside Walton. That's too easy. Tomlin, excuse me. You know, the diagonal pass against the 1 3 1 zone. You can isolate that backside big. Well read. Well executed by the Memphis Tigers. Crowd has been live here from the forum, especially the second half. Tigers up 12, a chance for more. Tomlin, literally, back to Tomlin. are playing for their season. Lenardi into the next four out category. Yeah, Lenardi quoted last night, Memphis has really put it together as of late, including the second half here in Memphis. With a win here, Memphis will officially move back onto the bubbles the next four out, and guess what? A quad one opportunity at FAU is on the horizon if Memphis can win today. Memphis had 46 points in the first half. They were down 61 to 46. They scored 38 here in the second half. 38 to 9. Davis inside. Ball knocked away. Quinterly right to the hole. Swings it for Tomlin. Lost it on the way up. And a pushing foul is called on UAB. And it's on Johnson. For the body language for UAB versus the first half. I mean, they were riding high. They were riding that wave. They were in the barrel of that wave. But right now, they've been swept onto shore. The tidal wave from Memphis since the last two minutes of the first half until now has been total domination. Johnson with his fourth personal foul. It's the 10th team foul of the second half. Automatic two free throws at the line here for Quinterly. And this has just been a tale of two halves. 
And then you see Vasquez who's just feel off hand. Yeah, you feel for him because uh, he, he hurt that left leg, ankle, foot. Not quite exactly sure. Not going to speculate, but he's out and has not been able to make a return into this game. And he was having a phenomenal game. He had 18 points, six and nine from the field, yeah. three of four from three point range mark, four boards. He was part of that heart and soul that got this UAB team a 22 point lead as good as they played in the first half it's as bad as they played here in the second half it's crazy the way this game is standing is right now I just don't get it because I don't want to play this team in the NCAA tournament I don't know about you you asked me about the Mountain West and why are their metrics so good San Diego State beat St. Mary's by 25 and Gonzaga by 10 Colorado State beat Creighton by 21 Nevada beat TCU by 13. UNLV beat Creighton by 15. And Utah State beat Marshall by 23. SFA by 30. And San Diego by 27. If you beat the crap out of people in the net, you get rewarded. Sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense. We know that. Lendeborg works his way in. Foul is called. Job. Great job. Let's see who they get this one on here. That's going to be on Tomlin. That is number four. Yep. So Tomlin picks up his fourth personal foul. Five team fouls from Memphis. The lead is 15 with 8-11 to go, and Tomlin's going to go out. Jaden Hardaway's back in. Well, for UAB, you just can't abandon ship. They've dominated so much in the first half. And I like the fact they're going down low to big number three inside. Lendeborg can, can deliver it. There they it is do again. Now. Yep. Mismatch. Against Hardaway. Home. Follow by Davis. They're on the weak side for the rebound and the two. And Lendeborg drew two defenders, which allowed Davis to go right to the backside rim. But now they got to make stops. Davis with ten points. You got to take Jones out of the equation. Every time he touches it, something good happens for Memphis. Jordan feeds the cutter Jones, and he scores easily. Yeah, Mark. I mean, Your Honor, I rest my case. Yeah. Dude's a first-team All-American. Twenty-eight for Jones. We will return. The Tigers, complete turnaround here in the second half. They lead by 15. We'll be back. Domino's Perfect Combo includes two pizzas, two sides, and a two-liter bottle of Coke. So we were asking real people how much they think all... Just a tough day. We thank Chris Mortensen for all that he did and all that he stood for and... The excellent person that he was, not only on the air, but off the air, too, Mark. A true professional. Rest in peace. Ortiz for UAB as we're back to action here from Memphis in this crucial American Athletic Conference matchup. 15-point lead for the Tigers. Trying to add to it, they do. It's Jaden Hardaway who bangs the three. For the rebounding and energy on the glass of the Memphis Tigers has been an indicator of how together this team is. Look, you can stay together when things are going great. It's when things go south where you got to be together. And this team responded at halftime. Gaines, Gaines responds, yeah, with a three on the other end. Now, I saw it at practice yesterday. It did not translate in the first half, but they didn't. They didn't turn on each other. They stayed together at halftime, and it shows. Ball's in up the corner lane. The crossover moves here, and the shot is up, and it's no good. He got his own rebound. He's done that a few times today. Works it on Coleman, right back out to the top. Jordan. That's yeah, smart. Yeah, they're Burn no the hurry. Clock. The knowledgeable fans here know it. 20 offensive rebounds in this game. Jones. Rejected. Coleman. Jordan. Back to Jones. Unselfish basketball by the Memphis Tigers. 30 points for David Jones. And every defense is designed to stop him. You can't. He's James Harden. The second coming of James Harden. 
His career high is 36. He's six away from that. There's a foul called here on Walton on the push. I mean, look at this. Three players for Memphis over 20 points. Jones has 30. Tomlin with the 25, Quinterly 23. This is unreal. 78 of the 92 points have come from these three guys. And just think how much defenders are focused on David Jones and Naquan Tomlin, obviously a guy that has exerted his will offensively. It's the first time that Memphis had three scores for 20 or more since 2016, December of 2016. That's unreal. You know, and give Memphis credit for recognizing who their three best players are right. and getting them the ball time and time again. Look, you can guard one guy. You might be able to guard two. Once you start turning into three and four, that's when it gets to be a problem. Thomas of rebound. Johnson. Got it. Is that the first offensive rebound in the second half for them? I mean, it's been one and done on the entire half. Yeah. Haven't had a lot of opportunities. They've been outscored in the second half, 46 to 16. Jaden Hardaway back for Jones. Three ball. He's been feeling it. Not that time. Gains the rebound. Nice job behind the back. Here he comes. Gains. Wow. Post to post. That's how he sliced and diced this defense in the first half. We're going to get a timeout here for Memphis, I think. They call it with 4.58 to play. The lead is 13. Still plenty of time to go here if you're UAB, but doing it without Vasquez, who's still the leading scorer. In the I'm telling you, Kenny Hardaway walked out of this place like he, like he owned Beale Street, <laughs> which I think he does, by the way. Pretty much. Nothing but confidence from the head coach. It was a 40-point swing in this game. Tomlin is fouled underneath. They're going to call it on Tony Tony. Number 12 for UAB. Two shots coming. They were down 22. They led by as many as 18. It's 13 now as Tomlin goes to the free throw line. Well, this guy, to me, has been the biggest catalyst of the turnaround for Memphis, most recent turnaround for Memphis. ESPN Plus, the home of the American Women's Basketball Championship. Exclusive coverage, first round through the semifinals. Tournament begins Saturday, this Saturday, March 9th, at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Championship game on ESPNU. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC or download the ESPN app. Tomlin has now tied his career high with 26 points here in this game. UAB. And you can't score 14 in one possession. He's got to continue to whittle away. They go to Davis Lowe. There's the double. Ortiz. They swing it. Gaines. Johnson's open in the corner. Couldn't get it to him. Instead, Jones with a steal. Great rotation by Memphis. Active hands, active feet. Penny Hardaway is going to use some clock here every half-court possession. With the job he has done of settling his team down, running their offense, sharing the ball, and giving it to their best players time and time again. Stripped right there by Ortiz. Yeah, nice steal there. Here's Gaines. Feeds it up Johnson. Stop, pop for three. It's short. Walton the rebound. Finally back with it. Got it over to Quinterly. Bounces it for a cutting Jordan. He missed it, but Tomlin's there. Well, that one-two punch of Jordan and Tomlin is lethal. This team's better with those two guys in the game playing major minutes together. Oh, technical has been assessed here. What do we just have here? Jeff Hartness. I think it's on Eric Gaines. I yeah, think. on UAB. Yep, technical foul on Gaines. Skip that rock across the pond. 
Jordan doesn't make it, but Tomlin does. The one-two punch of the two bigs for Memphis, lethal. These two shots for the opposing team and a point of interruption. So UAB had the ball, so they will retain possession of the ball after we get the two free throws here, shot by Memphis. So Gaines has a technical. Coach Andy Kennedy was given two and tossed in the game. And David Jones has been given a technical in this game from Memphis as well. So our crew here with Byron Jarrett, Keith Kimball, and Jeb Hartness not taking anything here today from the yep. FedEx Forum in Memphis and trying to keep control of the game, which they've done a nice job with. And it's just a tale of two halves. I mean, you're UAB, you're flying high, you're feeling great. You had a 22-point first half lead, a 16-point halftime lead. And then all of a sudden, the second half, Memphis has gone up by as many as 18. And they're right back up to an 18-point advantage here with 3.36 to go. And now UAB will have seven seconds to cross the timeline since they burned three right before the technical foul. And that's not going to be a problem. And Quinterly ties a season high with 25 points. He's one off of his career high. How many more career highs are Memphis players going to have here today? Rebound, Johnson, score it for UAB. Nobody to help Quinterly. Quinterly's fouled in the backcourt. It's going to be on Lendeborg. That's going to be his fourth. Well, UAB played as good a basketball as I've seen all year in the first half. They executed everything perfectly. And then that mini run with about two minutes to go in the first half, and clearly bang. He's had so many big shots. The, yeah. oh, the yeah. shot to beat Tulsa, the shot to beat SMU. He's made so many last second plays for this team. This team is 11, has won 11 out of 15 games decided by six points or less. And Javon Quirley is always in the middle of it. And that shot to cut to 15 was a big shot for this Memphis Tiger program. That was Alejandro Vasquez over there on the sideline for UAB, who has been unable to return after injuring his left foot, ankle, and leg on a play earlier, and has been unable to come back. And he has still the team high of 18 points, 6 and 9 to the field, but 22 total minutes of action. Have not seen him that much at all here in the second half because of the injury. And now foul is called. They're going to be on Walton here from Memphis. Or you can feel March Madness coming, can't <laughs> yes. you? And you can yes. feel it from the coaches. And this game is so big for the Memphis Tigers. Well, let's say this here, right? Okay, you're UAB. You have the four spot right now. Memphis has the five. Of course, you're going to flip-flop here when they, if they get this win here today. But, Mark, there's two more games still left for UAB. Memphis has one, and they're going to go yep. play at FAU. FAU. Which is opportunity for them, because that's that's another quad one opportunity. But, look, it's not going to be easy with Dusty May and FAU in that nut house. Right. So if you're the Blazers, you don't come back here in this game with a 16-point deficit and just 240 remaining. You still have an opportunity to still potentially get that number four spot. That's sort of jumper here from Coleman. Yeah, that matchup with Memphis and FAU, everybody circled the calendar when they saw that finale because both those teams were picked to win the conference. Of course, Amir Abdul-Rahim and the USF Bulls had something to say about that as they have already clinched the championship in the American. UAB is the only team to beat them in conference play this year. This basket scored by Jordan. Yeah, 15-1 with that one loss to this Blazers team. Well, and USF, look, their season really turned around and got it rolling when they came here. We're down 20 and came back and won. And they haven't, they haven't stopped rolling since. We're going to show that Tiger on the roller coaster again. <laughs> <laughs> These fans here at Memphis, right? They gotta be thinking, what the heck is going on in this season, right? But what a fun ride! Oh my gosh! Yes. In totality, what a fun ride! Quinterly and Jordan to the sideline, nice ovation from the fans. Of course, Jordan has already announced he will be back for next season. Yep. 
has another year. You know who also has another year? <laughs> David Jones. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> what a career season he's having. And today, too. 30 points. Number eight in blue for the Tigers. 9 of 20 from the field, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. He's got nine rebounds as well. Yeah, to me, David Jones is the player of the year in the conference. And his numbers are the numbers of over, over 20 points per game, over seven rebounds per game, over two steals per game. That last guy to do that was Zion Williams. Takes it in again on cue. 32 for number eight. 101 on the board for the Tigers. Third time this season they scored over 100 points. Did it in a 107-101 overtime win against UTSA here at home and then in a 112-86 win on the road at Wichita State. Traveling violation. Well, this has been an offensive explosion. Now the nation is seeing why this Memphis team can not only make the NCAA tournament, but win games in the NCAA tournament. They are now connected. They defended, they executed in the second half. And the seniors and Jones. They had honored this, this group before the game here today. And Jaden Hardaway, Caleb Mills, Javon Quinterly, Naquan Tomlin, and David Jones. And David Jones' sister, Floor Elena, surprised him today. I know his mother, Rafaela, is watching in the Dominican Republic right now. Jaden Hardaway for three. I've seen a lot of basketball games. This one is going to take the cake. Well, a complete turnaround, too. And it started with a minute 25 to go in the end of that first half. It was a 22-point game, and Mark Hewitt said, hey, you got to get one here, try to get this down to 18, 17 points. Yep, they got a bucket. Then they got another bucket. And then they got that quarterly three in between half court and the three-point line as time expired to end the first half. And you called it. Penny Hardaway did not look look nervous at all as he went to the locker room. I'd love to talk to him afterwards yeah. find out what he had to say. Yeah, he walked out of here like he owned the joint and was going to win this game and convinced his team that they could come back and win, and they have done just that. Young is in, and he just scored for Memphis. And this has been a 43-point swing here today. The Tigers were down 22, and they're now up 21. Yeah, Memphis fans are going to look back at this game. Look, if the Memphis Tigers can take advantage of their next opportunity, and that is not an easy task, it's going to be crazy at FAU. Dusty May, one of the great coaches in the country, led the Owls in the Final Four one year ago. But the season is on the line for the Memphis Tigers. The crowd rising to their feet here at the FedEx Forum. And for good reason. They were dead in the water in the first half. The second half entirely different in a 106-87 win over UAB.